Hi guys! Before I proceed, please like this video. Turn on your notifications to receive updates whenever we make a post. Thank you! You all remember the video I posted of Ali Ndume blasting Tinubu's government. In a dramatic move, the Senate has removed Ali Ndume as chief whip after he spoke out against President Bola Tinubu's government, calling it loaded with looters. And he also expressed his shame as being part of a government plagued with corruption. And Ali Ndume has immediately been replaced by Mohammed Mungunu. Another one. Chief Dan Mwayamu, the chairman of Zenit Labour Party, addressed the press at the Transcorp Hilton Hotel in Abuja concerning a threat to his life. Chief Mwayamu has made some serious allegations against agents of Nelson Wiki, the FCT minister. According to him, these agents have threatened his life for speaking out on issues related to the ongoing face off between Minister Wiki and Governor Fubara of River State. Just watch the video, guys. Uh, some unknown persons have been following me with vehicles and I've been monitoring but the thing came to a head on Friday when I was physically confronted so this is a threat to the life of Chief Dan Wanyan, my humble self I am constrained to bring to the notice of the Nigerian public the unprovoked threat to my life by a notorious agent of the former governor of River State and now Minister of Federal Capital Territory, Chief Nelson Wike, by name, Mr. Moses Emmanuel. This bloodthirsty killer presently confronted me at the pastry shop, Transcorp Hilton, where I was having snacks and coffee with my friend Alaji Aliu. He said he wanted to, when he came, he said he wanted to speak with me. Not having known him before, I demanded to know what he wanted to speak to me about. He insisted he would like to speak with me, and I offered him a seat to sit down. He introduced himself as a brother to Chief Nelson Wike and began a threat to my life, making reference to the television interview I granted where I expressed my personal views on the avoidable crisis in River State, which was being orchestrated and fueled by the followers of the former governor by his instinct against the incumbent governor, Chief Simi Fubara. Most well-meaning Nigerians and leaders have at various times since the crisis began expressed their views, concerns about the threatening explosion in that critical state of Nigeria. I have in all my political life intervened to the best of my ability on any issue that is likely to destabilize our fledging democracy. I have never sat on the fence where issues of national interest are concerned. In that manner, I raise my voice, as I have always done, in other issues that border on national unity and stability. I express my concern on Chief Mike's interference and meddlesomeness in the governance of River State, a state he governed for eight uninterrupted years. I was concerned 
that if law and order should break down in river states, its impact on already poor economic situation in the country will further deteriorate and may snowball into a larger, bigger conflagration in a country that is already restive with many unimaginable, unmanageable flashpoints. No patriotic political leader will see such impending danger and not stand boldly and forthrightly to, to be counted among the peacemakers to reduce the tension in river states. It is this interview that I granted to express my personal views and suggested, made suggestions on the burning issues of river state crisis that apparently angered Chief Mwike to dispatch his hitman to threaten me with elimination if I venture to speak on the matter of Rivers and Mike again. This wild dog became so vociferous in his threats that others around the pastry corner had him. And this attracted the security agencies in the Transcorp Hilton. They took him to the basement of the hotel for interrogation. He was interrogated and the colleague with him, who did not disclose his identity, told him to call the minister, call the minister, call the minister. And he made frantic, call, frantic efforts. The call got through and he spoke to somebody. His phone, shortly after that call, he made another call. The third call came and he wanted to hand over the phone to me. I said I was not going to talk to anybody. He pleaded and pleaded, I said no. He told the man on the other side, he said he would not speak to you. The man said, tell Chief Dan, it is Chuku Emeka Mwoke that wants to talk to him. Then I took the phone. Immediately I took the phone, I said, Emeka, you and your boss Mwoke have sent your hitman to kill me. He said, no, 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 nobody's going to kill you. you. The man is here. He said he will shoot me, he will kill me. And he's calling you. He has called the minister. He's calling you, which means you are aware that he, he was with me in, Trisco, in Transco. I said I will not speak with him again. He said, please, we are in Port Harcourt. We are coming back on Monday. And I will see you. I said, that won't be necessary. Emeka Woke was Wike chief of staff as governor. He also has a federal appointment here now in Abuja. Well, that was that. The security men who intervened, Transcorp security, police, DSS, and army, I didn't know they have all that squad there asked me what I would want to do. At this point, I told them I would want to press a charge of threat to life. I believe the hotel management with the standard of Transcorp Hotel must have the footages through their CCTV, what I have stated here for the purpose of verification. And I also believed that DSS opened a thorough investigation. We verify and corroborate the telephone the conversation between me and Chief Emeka Nwoke. I wish to seize this opportunity to draw the attention of the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief Bola Ahmed Tinibu, 
of the involvement of a cabinet minister in his cabinet. In the person of Chief Mwike, FCT minister, in the threat to my life, I similarly draw the attention of the Inspector General of Police, Director General DSS, National Security Advisor, and the general public to this ugly situation, which, if not nipped in the bud, will degenerate to a point where a Nigerian will no longer be safe anymore to express his opinion on national issues, even as the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria guarantees freedom of expression as an inalienable right of every Nigerian citizen. Should anything happen to me and any member of my family, henceforth, the President, Nigerian citizens should not look far from who did it. I was able to obtain an undertaking and a letter of apology from the same Moses, Emmanuel, for threatening my life. That is a copy of the undertaking and the letter of apology threatening my life in transcorp. His pictures are here. And I have referred to, you see, Transcorp Hotel is a very good hotel that there are cameras. You can't pick a pin in Transcorp, they won't get you. So I have called on them to go into the CCTV. They should start with the pastry corner. I sat coolly with a large alu on my table alone when they walked in. And I want to state that trusting that the president will take the matter seriously, I demand that I'm provided with adequate and enough security to protect myself and my family. I offer that demand that Chief Nelson Wike should sign an undertaking that he will be held responsible just as his agent has signed which I have shown you the copy of his undertaking here. If anything unwholesome happens to me and my family, I want to add, I am undeterred. I didn't join politics because of Nelson Wike. I have been consistent. And I have done a check on who Moses Emmanuel is. That's why I'm not calling him a killer. He's the one that did all the dirty jobs in Rivers. This was the report I got. He has moved here with his men. And why am I calling the president? Because those things that were happening in Rivers will soon stop happening in Abuja. So the president should not look far. We cannot run away because of one man. We have been in this game. He should be ready to kill more people. What did I say that angered him? Because I revealed what he had in his heart that he would run against President Tinubu, which is true. If I lied, you come out and say Nigerians, don't mind that, he's a liar. I will not run against Tinubu. Why have you not denied it? You decided to use Gestapo tactics as a response. Come and say I lied. I will give more information. I have more on that. He will run against him. Come and deny it. Even as I'm talking to you now, vice presidential candidates have been penciled. I don't talk anyhow. I know what I'm saying. They are from the north. Is that your pen? Come and say it's not true. Then I will make references and produce facts. That shouldn't anger you to the point of taking life. So the report I, get about, I got about Moses is that he is a killer. In fact, one of the guys said that he's the one that points, that, that, that pours champagne and whiskey in his cup, in his boss cup. 
when they want to laugh as in a joke. That is the man that confronted me directly in Transco, in an open place. I am not talking Fabu. I have called the security agencies, go and take the footage. You will see it in Transco. And he has already written an apology and undertaken. But that is not enough. That's why I'm bringing this poor conference so that Nigerians will know. I had the option to keep quiet, but everybody I spoke to said, no, let the public know. Should anything happen tomorrow, go ahead, Mwike, responsible. Nyeso Mwike, Minister, FCT. These are his boys. And even as I have mentioned his name, Moses Emmanuel, when you go out, call River State people you know and ask them who is Moses Emmanuel. That was the guy that confronted me uninvited and said he will shoot me i will kill you so that is what i want to tell you but don't say that i'm running away i won't run away i'll continue to speak the truth this country belongs to all of us it's not because of what i call relativity to time and space you got somewhere you think you are the only one loved by god the fact that you succeeded doesn't mean that others are foolish or stupid. It is relativity to time and space. So that is the information I'm giving you. And I want the public to know this. That Mwike sent his hitmen to kill me on Friday between the hours of 2 o'clock and 3 p.m. Another one. U.S. Museum has returned two artifacts stolen long ago to their rightful owners, which is the Bini Kingdom. These precious artifacts were stolen during the Bini expeditions of 1897 and has been in the museum's collection for over a century. The Bini expeditions was a British military invasion of the Bini Kingdom, which resulted in looting of countless artifacts and treasures. The return of these artifacts marks a significant step towards restitution and reconciliation. It's a momentous occasion for the people of Bini Kingdom and a testament to the power of repatriation. The artifacts were received with great fanfare and ceremony in the Bini Kingdom, where they will be preserved and cherished for generations to come.
This is your number one source of news and updates on the latest happenings in the world of politics, entertainment and more. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, comment and also share our videos. Bye for now.